Good evening, folks. It's Diamond with the Oppenheimer Ranch Project and Magnetic Reversal News, bringing you a grand solar minimum update Friday, May 3rd, 8.30 p.m. Mountain Time, 2024. An X 1.6 Solar flare from Active Region 3663 shot directly towards us and a little north just about 24 hours ago. And the models are showing impact on May 6th. G2 geomagnetic storm or greater. We'll have more, more details in just a moment. Keep calm. It's boom time. May blizzard intensifying multiple feet of snow forecast across the West. Don't take out those mountain bikes just yet. Winter hasn't had its final say. A relatively cold storm system is developing in the West and experts are forecasting upward of two feet of snow for mountain peaks in California, Utah, Wyoming, and more through Wednesday, May 8th. Buckle up, buttercup. The full forecast is coming in just a moment. Colorado weather scattered storms to bring rain, hail, and snow through the weekend. Almost 300 tornadoes have been reported in April in the U.S. That is the second most ever reported. Well, it's been a very active month for severe weather across the United States. April had almost a record number of tornadoes reported throughout the month. So just in a month's time, we had almost 300 tornadoes recorded. This was not quite record breaking, but does rank as the top two. So April of 2011, that was when we had that super outbreak here in Tennessee. That was almost 800 tornadoes. Now take a look at the record number for April. Back in 2011, 757 total tornadoes. That is unbreakable in my opinion. As you can see, the three years prior to that that are also in record territory, all 260 to 290. So that was a bad year to be alive in the U.S. Now, you guys might see gorilla hail reported in severe storms this spring, especially with some of the more salacious online uh, weather forecasters like Reed Timmer and all that is referring to is any hail two inches in diameter or larger where you actually need a helmet to protect your noggin to prevent damage. And so Gorilla Hail is nothing more than a moniker we use in weather reporting to report on extremely large hail. And it will be increasing as we move deeper into the magnetic excursion and the sun continues to be inactive. The magnetosphere will wane, and that means more hail, bigger hail, and better helmets. Here's the hail map for Thursday, May 2nd, yesterday. And we can see here 802 square miles were impacted by almost by gorilla hail. That's a huge swath of the U.S., mostly in Texas, the nexus of the Schmexis. 30,810 square miles impacted by one inch hail or greater. So put on those helmets. Spring is still happening. <laughs> Heavy rainfall for the Southern Plains and the Central Gulf Coast. Severe weather for the Southern Plains. Strong Pacific storm approaching. And that means more snow. Deep snow. Shut up, Al. Get in your hole. Al Gore gets no bunt cake tonight. Heavy rainfall and flooding concerns continue for portions of Texas into the lower Mississippi Valley. Severe thunderstorms are expected to redevelop across areas of central Texas later today. Meanwhile, strong Pacific storms will move ashore this weekend, increasing winds for many areas of the west and the southwest. We have uh, fire weather warnings up for all of tomorrow, and currently you can see these counties in pink also in that fire weather watch heavy precipitation with snow for the higher terrain in the west and you can see some winter storm warnings and watches out in may hey hey let's take a look at the severe weather threat on the gfs model and walk it through so here is just in the next three to six hours we could see some severe weather in Nebraska overnight as well as Texas, the nexus of the Schmexis. The severe weather in Nebraska could move east into Iowa and then it kind of quiets down until Sunday, which could be a fun day for central Texas as a huge swath of severe weather explodes over the region. At the same time, later in the weekend, you can see heavy snow crushing the west 
in the high elevations. Let's take a look at the total snowfall totals for the West for the first week of May. Here's the fourth, the fifth, the sixth. Take a look at that. Could be record snow totals uh, in the Sierras or even the Cascades. And as we move this through May 8th, 9th, and 10th, looks pretty stellar for snow in Idaho, western Montana, Wyoming, Utah, southern Colorado. Take a look at the southern mountains here showing potential for more than two feet of snow through May 11th. Holy macaroni. Al Gore is not happy. A woman dies as a mudslide tears through her home during storms in France. More rain is expected across most of the country. We also share photos and videos yesterday of hailstorm and lightning. So you can go check out some of the severe weather in France that was absolutely decimating the Chablis vineyards. Pentahibule size. Whatever that means, hailstones ruin crops as freak weather pummels France and completely erases this Chablis vineyard. Sign of the times. Just like I said, more hail coming. We predicted this years ago. I hope you've been listening. Seismic update. Big rocker up here just offshore of the Pacific Northwest, 5.0. 211 kilometers west-southwest of Tofino, Canada, on that Cascadia transition zone. I'm sure that got a few people's panties in a bunch. And Mary Greeley right now is fear-mongering about it. Volcano Watch. More than 1,600 earthquakes have been recorded on Kilauea since late April. And that means, well, an eruption is probably imminent. Elevated seismicity continues beneath Kilauea today in the Upper East Rift Zone specifically, and the caldera south of Halamahalamalu. So, the heightened state of unrest that began on April 27th continues Thursday and into Friday with elevated seismicity ongoing beneath the East Rift Zone and the caldera south of Halamahalamua. I don't think I got that right. <laughs> But if we take a look at some of the graphics, you can see a rapid jump in seismicity here on April 29th, a secondary jump here just on the beginning of May, hey, hey, and another jump on May 2nd as things look to be even sloping up even steeper here. This is earthquakes per day. So it appears as if huge amounts of magma are now building and, uh, well, an eruption is imminent. Worldwide Volcano News, Reykjanes Peninsula. Here we can see pressure in the magma chamber continuing to be elevated and rapidly increasing over the last 24 hours. A new eruption here is also not ruled out. So we could be seeing some double activity near Grindavik with two eruptions happening at the same time. Sangay today to 20,000 feet. Sabankaya to 25. Popo to 20. Ruang puffing and passing to 6,000 feet. Raventador, 14,000 feet. Santa Guida to 14. Sabankaya to 23. And what else do we have? We have some new Poas on the list. Kiss my Poas volcano. 10,000 foot puff today. And that, Liwa Toby getting on the list with the 6,000-foot puff as well. Space weather is the big news. The sun has been quite active over the last 28, 32 hours with an X-flare and multiple M-flares. Here we can see a long-duration array of high C and M-flare activity. That's happening right now, which means global D-layer absorption and radio blackout. Now, because of this impulsive M-flare and then a secondary, or this impulsive X, 1.6 X-flare and the secondary M-flare, we have geomagnetic storms headed our way. We're going to get to the models in a minute. Could be long-lasting, up to nine hours beginning on May 5th and ending on May 6th. Three-day geomagnetic activity has just been updated. There may be some fine-tuning on this as we get better modeling. So let's take a quick look at ISWA, this was the first model to come out, and it shows a direct hit. Boom! Right there. We are the little yellow circle here, and a direct hit of the white plasma as far as ISWA is concerned. The WSA Enlil spiral showing a little weaker glancing blow. If I can move that through, you can see here that X flare coming out here on the third, and boom! A more of a glancing blow 
on the uh, WSA and little solar, solar wind spiral there. So anyone's guess what will actually happen, but we will all be here to witness it, won't we? The 1.69 X flare that was directly earth facing, albeit this sunspot is way north of center disk, which means most of the plasma went off to the north, confirmed by the coronagraphs. Uh, which we can see here in the coronagraph, the majority of the ejecta is going straight up and north, but some, apparently, according to both models, is headed our way. So cross your fingers that the evening of May 5th into the morning of May 6th is a amazing aurora day. Hey, hey. China launches the world's first mission to retrieve samples from the far side of the moon. Now, these samples would contain all of the evidence of plasma impact from huge solar outbursts in recent times. What I mean by that is geologically recent, which means in since the Holocene and some of these big events that we call Miyake events. Are there actual huge solar storms that explode off the sun that hit the moon like a moon boom? Well... Unfortunately, China may be the first country to realize that scientific data. The Chang'e 6 mission will advance Beijing's ambitions to become a space power and scientific force, but its steady progress has caused concern at NASA and in Congress. Did you hear that? World War III. Now, here's some cockamamie research. Research shows bumblebee nests are overheating due to climate change. I guess they didn't get the memo. Bees are thermophilic, and that's why they cap their honey. The honey doesn't melt in Arizona or anything like that. They know how to control the temperature of the hive. So this paper clearly, and this article clearly a short article, uh, because temperature has nothing to do with bees. Bees live in the hottest places on earth, and it does not threaten any of the varieties of bees. If it's too hot in a hive, bees know how to regulate the temperature. They do it all day. That's how bees can live out here in the backyard between minus 30 degrees and 120 degrees. That's our temperatures here at the ranch. And so bees know how to do it because they still live here. So if their hive got too hot and they couldn't thermophilically adjust the temperature... They take the queen, they move her outside, and they move to a new location. That's what bees have been doing for millions of years. But apparently, physics.org hasn't been doing it that long. Huff and puff your way to health. Exercise slash risk of early death by 20%. We're talking about cardiovascular exercise, which they call here cardiorespiratory fitness. I guess they need to rename everything. I wonder what the pronouns are. But this cardio ras cardiovascular fitness, which means your heart rate elevates. You run around. You do a bunch of stuff. You breathe, he breathe heavy. That's what I do every day. It can actually lower the risk of premature death, chronic disease, and complications from poor health by a staggering 20%. I haven't been sick in almost two decades. It's it's amazing. I don't get sick. I eat the right foods. I do a bunch of dumb stuff, but I don't get sick. I eat the right foods. I exercise daily. I huff and I puff and I'll blow your house down. Now, Lee and I are going to be talking about a multivariate of topics tomorrow on the radio show, which is going to be rebroadcast on Magnetic Reversal News tomorrow night for the main show. The first topic is Elon Musk's Starlink constellation slowly poisoning an Earth. In a new study, not only is it poisoning Earth, but it may be affecting the magnetosphere, which is bad news because we're currently in a magnetic excursion and it could mean a mass extinction. Speaking of which, we're also going to be discussing the Saruti Mastodon site, a very controversial site where some archaeologists and paleontologists think that this shows human occupation in the Americas a very long time ago. How long ago? How about 
130,700 years ago in California. Very controversial site. Join us for the discussion tomorrow. And also, have you heard? Apocalypse has gone mainstream. The end of the world is now becoming normal conversation, as we knew all along it would, which is why we started the channel about a decade ago. This article written by Eric Blyke of Middlebury College and Christopher Starr, the exponential growth of artificial intelligence over the past year has sparked discussion about whether the era of human domination of our planet is drawing to a close. The most dire predictions claim the machines will take over within 10 years and Armageddon will be complete. We can only pray for the solar flare. In the meantime, as things get bad, you're going to need to know how to grow your own food. Our affiliate, the Alliance of Native Seed Keepers, has the cheapest seeds on planet Earth for you to purchase. $2 per pack, and we just added over 70 varieties overnight. Now almost 300 varieties in stock. If you order $25 or more, it's free shipping. Add coupon code ORP2024 for 10% off. And it's literally free seeds. Join us in the desert in just a few weeks for the Crow Canyon Petroglyph Tour. A few tickets left, but I know proper prior planning prevents piss poor performance because we're going on one of the most extreme desert ex expeditions that anyone can go on. It's one of the most epic petroglyph experiences on earth the best-known collection of 16th to 18th century Navajo petroglyphs, which are actually Diné petroglyphs. We'll talk about that on the tour and more. Go get them. And that's a boom to science and knowledge. Please share this video as we are shadow banned and we need your help to grow. Become a Patreon. Support the work we do. We love you. Be safe. And that is a boom. Nee, nee, nee.